Film number two, The Woman King, released October the 4th, 2022, directed by Gina Prince Bythewood. We had Viola Davis as Naniska, Thusu Mbedu as Nawi, Lashana Lynch as Izogi, and John Boyega as King Gezo. A historical epic inspired by true events that took place in the Kingdom of Dahomey, one of the most powerful states of Africa in the 18th and 19th centuries. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Hey. Kyle, were you entertained? Yes. Amari, were you entertained? Yes. Giles, were you entertained? Yes. Full House, I was entertained as well. Oh, that's good. <laughs> didn't say, didn't say I liked it though. <laughs> didn't say I enjoyed the film though. <laughs> well, I tell you what, if we, if we weren't all entertained about a film, you know, that, that documents... <laughs> Documents the motherland. <laughs> I'm gonna ask to see some identification. People are getting booted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I might be doing this podcast all by myself. Just don't get it twisted. <laughs> well, there. I think there's a fair amount to say about this. Um, Amari, would you like to kick things off? How was your experience of? The Woman King, and what did you think of the film? Mm, I, 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 I was very conflicted. I, I'll be honest. Before I got into the film, obviously didn't w- didn't watch reviews or anything like that. But clearly, I knew I knew about certain issues, or let's say context of the film. That every time there's a slave film, it's always not always. I don't want to watch any more slave films. You you lot already know this. I already told you. I don't watch no more slave films. I'm tired. And any film that has to do anything to do with slavery, I'm, I'm tired. And it was very disappointing that the way it was, I'm going to say the way the film was put out in marketing was said that slavery, it's not say slavery didn't happen. It was like, it was against slavery. And that's not how the film, I don't know if the film actually portrayed that because I still haven't done my research. And that concerned me before I get to the film. Now, if I actually watch the film in no, with no context, because I like this word, no context, it makes sense. When you watch a film, do you want to see action? I've got that in the first two minutes. First two to six minutes, I was like, oh, I'm blown away. I've never seen Viola Davis move. And I was I was very impressed. I heard that she'd done training for it, but I was like, oh, this is impressive. Just as you touch on Viola Davis, we need to give this woman her respect. One of the goats. Mm. One now, of the go- uh? This is the reason why I have I have a complex issue with the film. Uh-oh. You asked me if I like the film. You didn't ask me. I her I have a complex issue with. I know she is a great actress. I'm not debating her acting ability. That's not the issue I had for me. She was we, sidetracking, but she did the help, right? And she got her Oscar for the help. She ran round about ten years later and said she should have never have done the help. Because of the way he portrays black people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Cool, but you didn't do that, and then you come and do this later. You do a film that's talking about, oh yes, women are empowered, but we still took people and made them slaves that are our own people. So why don't we have the discussion? Why don't we have? Because I feel like we're, we're having it, but not having it. Why don't we have the discussion? It, it's just, I'm only talking about from where I was coming from to watch the film. So I'm just getting how. Of course, but I, I, it's funny because the way you're breaking it down, I think, is perfect because this is how. I kind of came into this, but I have a feeling Giles and Carl might have come into it through similar or very close to that. And I think maybe this is a good point to have the discussion because I'll say now I came into this completely blind. I didn't see anything about controversy. I didn't see anything about issues. It's only after I've watched it, gone and done some research, watched a few other reviews and I've now discovered all the problems that this film was causing. So Giles, how, how do you feel about the controversy? Maybe maybe it's best to start with addressing it and then we can go into how we maybe feel about what it was and how it affected maybe our thoughts on the film now. So, so, so let's be clear, which controversy are we talking about? I think maybe the first one, because I feel like Amari was, was touching on it, is that, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, haven't, I can't say it verbatim, but it's something to do with maybe the people of Dahomey actually rather than liberating slaves, weren't they playing a, a part in actually capturing and helping the slave trade or something yeah. along those lines? Okay, all right. So well, I don't really think that's controversial because to me that's... that's Okay, so obviously my heritage is Jamaican. 
Um, but if you look at the origins of, of Jamaica, the first, you know, the people that were, the, what, do, what do they call them? Indigenous, the indigenous population of Jamaica was, you know, the go back, you go back as far as the Arawak Indians. Yeah. Um, so we didn't really have black people over there. So obviously we would have come from Africa via the slave trade. Now, it doesn't take, you know, it's, it's something that isn't for me, you know, growing up, it was never, it was never acknowledged, but it was quite obvious that, okay, the white man, let's just be general, the, 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 the slave traders, they didn't just come in and, and take everyone, you know, so, so there must have been, and again, it, the, the key is in the name, it's slave trade. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, they, I mean, they, 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 even though they didn't explicitly go into it, I think uh, John Byager's character, he said, you know, his his dad, you know, sold out his mum, all the rest of it. Like, and he he was trying to, I know they tried to to make it out like he was trying to put a stop to it or Viola Davis's character was trying to put a stop to it. But I'm, I don't think that was like, it's, it's, it's one of these films, you know, there's always going to be historical inaccuracies. There's always going to be, you know, we, we weren't there. <laughs> and, and even if we were, you know, there's, there's different sides to the story. I think my biggest, not even my biggest issue, but my biggest takeaway was the film's title or how the film was built in terms, it was very much built as Viola Davis being the main character, but she actually wasn't. She actually, you know, it was, um, what's her name? What's the, what the, what's the daughter's That's, name? That's uh, Thuso Mbedu as Nawi. Yeah. Now, now, he, now he was blatantly the main character, um, you know, and, but she wasn't, it, you know, she, she, she wasn't quite a given that top billing, you know, even, you know, the, the woman King, but was it really about the woman King? You know what? I, I've, I've got to admit, I'm with you there. I've done some research and seen that there's been an uproar in, you know, the depiction of the Dahomey people and um, the, obviously the slave trading and stuff has gone I'm not going to take too much from that because again, and I think it was <laughs> Quentin Tarantino that said it best when there was the whole dispute about Bruce Lee in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And he was like, it's my film. I'm writing a script. It's not real. I can have whatever happens. It's my film. I'll do what I want. Now, that being said, obviously, slavery, the slave trade, this is a very, very, very sensitive and touching subject. So it's one of those things I think you kind of have to approach with dignity, respect and tread carefully. But I'm not going to criticise Gina Prince Bythewood, you know, completely for maybe taking characters or taking something that is real, making something that isn't real or writing a story that is, is fiction I'm not going to criticize her for that because ultimately the film is a film. It's not, it's not, you know, speaking as this is historical, this is history. It's, it's that, it's that very fine line between historical events and fiction. So I, in terms of the controversies and stuff, I'm not going to get to, or I'm not going to let it judge how I felt about the film. Kyle, how did you feel about it? Yeah. So again, like you, I didn't know about the controversies till after I watched the film, but I think, the problem is, is that although that Jar said they did touch on the fact that they were they were trading slaves themselves, I think the problem I have is the depiction. I feel like in the film we're made to root for the Dahomey people, whereas actually when you look into the history, these are not the sort of people that you're meant to be rooting for. <laughs> the PR even dropped out of the role after she was doing her documentary and actually went to Benin and found out about Agoje and the Dahomey people. And I think they had shipped over 2 million people from the 17th century to the 19th century. So then the fact that the film you're depicting these people is, yeah, oh, we're trying to get out of that, but you almost feel like you're rooting for them against the oil people. So I think it's almost like, I, I when I thought about it, it's like if they tried to, to put Hitler in a, in a film and then they're not, they're not taking away what he's done. They might acknowledge that he sent all of 
these Jews to their deaths, but then they pit him against someone else that's worse than him, and then you're rooting for Hitler in that movie. <laughs> that's, that's how I looked at him. So, <laughs> to be fair, I feel it. Yeah, I mean, it's a right. bit. It's, yeah, that's how. I, that's the conclusion I but, came to. But this is why I was angry before the film or during the film, like not during the film because I was enjoying the film. But this is why I was having issues with the film. Nothing to do with the film itself. It was just how are you trying to present yourself like this? So I was like, you're trying to present yourself as the oh, this this is the best of black people, but this is the this is the actual story, and we're not even afraid to say this is the story. This is the actual story. Whereas when you watch other films that change everything just to fit the narrative of a conversation, which is why I had the issue with the film, which is why I have an issue with Viola Davis. I don't feel like it's good for her to actually be in that position when you said, first said, I will do the help. I shouldn't have done the help. Then two to three years later, you're then recording the film. That's probably worse than the help in terms of actual tones when it comes to slavery and the development. And the bit longer than two to three years. She did the help in 2011. No, but no, but she did the help in 2011, but then, it's that 10 years later, she said, oh, I should not have done the help. I don't understand. It's, it's an article. If I find it, I'll send it. But it's a, basically she said, I shouldn't have done the help because it's disrespectful to black people and to my family and et cetera for doing it because of how it made us portrayed. But then you would do this. I'm a, it's like a double down feature. And then all I was thinking is that she was represented, <laughs> Anna Davis as a person, was looking like the wife or the supposed wife or the wanted to be wife of John Baylor, because my woman was like, hey, slavery's not a thing, you know. It's a thing that we need to do because we want to stay in power. Pa- I was like, hey, this is a bit mazzini. Well, you've kind of um, segued perfectly into the next topic I think we should touch on. And the only thing I wanted to say in conclusion to this whole controversy of um, how the, the kingdom of, or the people of the home may behaved, I guess the only question I would put to Gina Prince wife would be, would be, why not just make it fictional, completely fictional, almost like Wakanda? Why not talk about the real subject of slavery, but you don't have to use tribes and places and people that were real, maybe, and just make it kind of a, a, a fan, fantastical story that has truths within it that you could relate to the real world? Giles, Carl, how do you feel about that? Just touching on that point where you said about... Um why didn't they make it completely fictional? Well, you know why they didn't make it completely fictional because can you imagine the outroar? Can you imagine the frigging outroar if they'd have just got, hang on, oh my gosh, you've desecrated absolutely every Yeah, that wouldn't have worked. That you don't wouldn't think? have worked. No, nah, 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 nah. There's, there's no way, like, I mean, look, Amari, how do you feel about Black Panther? Look at his face, look at his face. I, I respect Black Panther as much as I respect the mummy. You didn't say that at the time. You did not say that at the time. <laughs> I said the mummy, which means it's a dot. It's not a good film. No, it's a not, bad not film. your rating. I was talking about, you know, that, anyway, forget that. But oh, yeah. Black Panther's a shit film. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the accents are shit. To be fair, the accents tried in this film, but it was also shit. But we're going to get to that. But the accents in this film was shit. I just think there would have been a massive outroar um, or uproar. Um, if they'd have kind of, like you said, it, it's a, it's quintessentially, it's not, it's, I, I don't want to call it a slave film, but it has slave, slave uh, themes and slave themes. They evoke certain emotions, well, very strong emotions. <laughs> and it's, it's like, there's no, there's, it's a, it's a bad, it's a, it's a bad topic that you're making in an entertainment form. Like it's, you're kind of damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Um, so I think she was kind of on a hide into nothing to be honest with you. Yeah. I think the other thing that obviously as part of the controversy, the screenwriter was white as well. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> yeah. So from my understanding, how this came about, she went to Benin and heard about the tribe of the Egoshi. So obviously she's thinking, wow, an all-female tribe. They were strong, powerful. I want to make a movie about this. And just completely put the historical <laughs> background out of the picture. That's why, again, there's that controversy. That that that's that's how it came across to me. You, you found out about all these powerful women warriors. You want to get your message out about women, and so I'm going to make a film about them. But just disregard <laughs> the role that they played. You didn't do your research, lad. You didn't do your research. 
if that is and okay look we're not here to well we are here to judge but in it, you kind of have to kind of call a spade a spade and I feel that I'd like to know rather than cast judgment I'd just put it in a question form I'd like to know maybe why and I'm going to do some research and see if she's answered the question in the interviews but I'd like to know what it was that made her want to make this film then specifically about the people of the home because it could be like you're saying Kyle she was drawn to the women the women empowerment the kind of role reversal which kind of fits the rhetoric of this day and age but there might have been other reasons but yeah I'd, I'd like to know why so I think Kyle be doing some research in that. I think the next point of discussion to talk about is get into the film, the performances. Giles, how did you feel about them? Yeah, I, I enjoyed, I've forgotten her fucking name again because you've made, made my mind go back. Nawi. 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 Yeah. Her performance, I mean, we'll get into her age, what her real age is. Um, but her performance, I was quite captivated by her eyes. Just, you know, they, they, they did a lot of her scenes where, you know, she, you know, she had these really bright eyes that, that it sold her emotions um, for me. Viola Davis, I'm a massive fan. You know, I, I, I know all about her from um, How to Get Away with Murder. You know, if you want intensity, if you want, you know, emotion, you know, without doing much, she, she, she's on it. John Boyega was, was solid. Um, the villain... I can't, I don't know who the guy who played him, but he, he was a little bit annoying. And the, um, the Portuguese guy, uh, who's actually English, he was a bit wet. But other than that, I thought. Well, the mixed race or the white, the mixed race or the white one? Yes. So, 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 so the not, so, so, so the good guy. The, 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 the mixed the, race There's one. a good one in the this good film. One. Oh my gosh. The good guy. Oh my gosh, yes, there's a good the, one. The, the good guy. His uh, character. And his performance was paper thin. I just want to get that in there. Yeah, wet, wet. It, it was almost like, how many scenes can I just take my top off and show my chiselled, my chiselled physique? Like literally. And that that little um, that little. I'm just jumping off you here, Giles. That little scene when he was washing now his hands and that was just creepy. It was very <laughs> creepy. Yeah, his whole thing was a waste of time. <laughs> it was there was no reason for him to be in this film. That whole plot, that whole subplot was just pointless. What the love, the love plot? She wants, he wanted yeah. to fall in love back with, back with his, back yeah, with his, yeah, yeah. and the women that he wanted to be with, and he made them be a paedophile because she was fourteen in my head because of the age that she was basically saying get married because there's no thirty year old woman who's getting kicked out of their house to say get married in in that day because they will be married already. You know how mad I was. And you're ten- mm. <laughs> I have issues. See, you don't have issues with the other film. I have more issues with this film. But it's okay. We can continue. I'm just we'll going to get- throw this this out there in the conversation of uh, performances. I'll be honest, boys. For me, this film was a Channel 5 film just filmed with a Hollywood budget. Outside of Viola Davis, outside of the... Um, the, the female warriors I think we had some great performances from like the main ones there they they kind of helped as well Nawi as well outside of that I think that the uh, performances were poor John Boyega now I don't know how you man feel about his performance but I, there was nothing about him that said king to me there was nothing about him he didn't command the scenes he didn't have presence he didn't speak in a way that I felt you know, was endearing, wasn't other than a pretty decent African accent, which the man's Nigerian, so he's going to have grown up around that. I didn't really think there was much to sing from the rooftops there. The main uh, villain, I can't remember his name now, maybe one of you can help me out, but again, other than the kind of Prince of Persia get up he had that made him look a bit menacing, paper thin, paper thin paper thin the performances here and that was what I kind of struggled with because I really wanted to enjoy this film I really wanted to come out thinking this was brilliant uh slave warrior you know that kind of vibe empowered maybe a little historical whatever but I just felt like this film was fighting with itself in various various areas but the form of performances was a big one for me yeah I think I think you're being a bit harsh I must admit when I first saw 
John Baega, I did think mm, he's not giving me them kind of King vibes. But then when he started actually acting and speaking, I was like, no, oh, actually, very believable. I actually, I actually liked his performance in this. Um, the the guy from the Oil Empire, he, he didn't really have much to do. He was a bit annoying, but I felt like that's how they wrote the character. But outside of the Portuguese, both of the Portuguese, I thought the performances throughout were quite strong. Lashana Lynch, who played Egozi, she annoyed me so much in Bond that I thought I couldn't watch something with her again. But she was actually good in this film as well. So I thought performance-wise... <laughs> performance-wise. <laughs> hey, that was I saw Mario get said, blown away to the back I, of his room, boy. A man said the performance was good, but you could get past the accent. But you could get past the accent for the performance to be good. You are a liar. You are a thief. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So uh, shall, we, shall we speak about the accents? Who? No, 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 no. There's not really said, much to say about the accent. You I said, think. no, 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 there is. Because you said her performance was good with that accent. Let me do the accent that she did. Eh, I am a woman. My hand was burned once. I am here. I'm a warrior. That no, was her no, accent. No, no, you no, no. I, I did not think it was that bad. No, <laughs> it I, was that I did bad. not think it was that bad. I really it didn't. But Amari, bad. you're you, you're harsh anyway because you were getting on to everyone in Black Panther. Sorry, I was correct. Well. I was correctly getting on to everyone in Black Panther. But continuing with what mm, you were saying, no, but, I, but I was but just right. Shana Lynch comment. Mm, mm, no, I, mm. I thought she gave a good performance. I was I was happy with her performance. I didn't have an <laughs> issue with her accent okay, either. That, so that that's what I wanted to say about performances. I'll pass it to you, Amari. Uh, yeah, you're, you're a liar. Okay. And Giles is a liar because he's going to be said to you. You're both liars. Just to be clear, if you want to agree that she could, she gave a good performance because of her accent, my issue is you're an actor and you're doing a role. So if you're doing a role that's not your native tongue, you're supposed to do the accent that matches the, that what you're doing. And if you're doing that, it's a poor accent equals a poor performance. That's it for me. Sorry, do 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 do, do, do you want to do the reel of people who have done acting with accents? Because you know, wait wait wait. Because I will find you a pikey man, and I know a guy's not a pikey man, and you did a pikey man accent, and it makes sense to me. But if you want to go through accents and do acting at the same time, are you gonna try to tell me that's good? You're gonna try to tell me the standard that she gave us is good. Is that what you're gonna say? If you're directing yeah. at me, then I'm going to say yes. I'm going you're to say I'm going to say the first person that came to mind with accents is Leonardo DiCaprio in Blood Diamond. Now, when I watched that film, I thought he, he, his accent was good. But then when I went, read reviews afterwards, people were killing his accent, but I thought it was good and I enjoyed his performance. So I'm putting her in that same category of I didn't have an issue with an accent and I thought oh. the performance was good. So, so you're definitely going to like Black Panther 2 then because, boy, I heard the accent's going to be the same again. So let's go. We know well, what you're going to say. Amari, I... I'd just like to ask you, how many people do you yeah. know that were born in the 18th or 17th century from the kingdom of Dahomey? <laughs> <laughs> because I need to know, I need to know how you're able to to measure Sorry. how a, a Dahomeyan she, accent. She sounds, she sounds, sounds, she sounds like me putting an African accent on, and I know, I know that I shouldn't do that. So once I know I shouldn't do that. You need to act it better than I shouldn't do that. And all you did was give me that what I would do. Which means, which means your acting ability for this role is poor. But I think that's very subjective. As It's not subjective. Uh, oh, because hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. As an African man, two African parents who has traveled to West Africa numerous times in my life, has numerous Africans in my family who I've been around and heard, I will say this. I wouldn't say it was the most convincing African accent by far. However, in the realm of the film we were watching and the, the role she was playing, I didn't hear anything that sounded too offensive. There were parts where she maybe sounded a bit static, a bit. it sounded a little bit forced. But if this film was set in today's world, I would have more of an issue because I would say that the the quality 
and the the dynamics of that African West African accent maybe should sound a bit more cohesive, a bit more. But I guess what I'm trying to say back then, it almost sounded a little bit Neanderthal, carnal. I'm going to accept that because we're going way back. Okay, so but wait. That's, that was the only thing I wanted to say about accents. I didn't find the accents here were that offensive or stood out as I can't now get into the characters or the film because their accents are standing out as poor or, or sound too forced. S- sorry, Giles, give me one second. So you're trying to tell me that you're going to watch a film that's supposed to be set in a time period and then those people can't do the accents of the film? Because that's what you just said. That's basically what you just said. I don't know what the no, accent's supposed to sound like. Well, that's, that's, that's what I'm being told. Can I, can I answer that? So, and you couldn't okay. accept can it. I you didn't think that? it was believable in the slightest. I, even, I already knew how bad Viola Davis was going to be and she even passed the American grade of being bad to poor. Yeah? I got from her bad to poor and you're giving me a girl, a woman, who's giving me bad all the way through. Yeah, uh, Mario, I think you're being you're being really very harsh. Um, accents are so subjective, especially like when Elliot said you throw in you throw into a time period. You know, if you look at how okay, if if you look at like so, let's just take I'll give you a couple of examples. Let's take the film Yardi. Did anyone see Yardi? Yeah, Amari, <laughs> Amari, you nearly spat your drink out. That means you saw it. And that was like, just, just for the, the cast. That was, um, I forget his name, but uh, Trife out of Kidohood. There's a reason why you don't, there's a reason why you don't do films yeah, anymore. I mean, I mean, there's, 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 there's a reason why. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, I think, it, well, I can't, I mean, something, I can't remember. But yeah, I mean, the accents by, I mean, it, the fact that Stephen Graham had the best <laughs> Jamaican accent in the film. But that's acting a bit. That's what I'm trying to say. Just said it all. So yeah, a film set in the 1800s, which, and, and Amara, we, we've talked about dates before when, um, what was the war film? We, uh, we, we <laughs> 19, <laughs> 1917. And you were like, yeah, but they should have done this. And I was like, bro, <laughs> it's 1917. I can't even remember the, the sound bite. It's, it's, in the, it's in the car somewhere. So yeah, I, I don't, the, the accents were what they were. Do you know what I mean? It, it They didn't, Listen, they just did generic accents. They were just ge- they were just generic accents. You know, what's um what's that? What's the country now called? Because it's yeah. not even called that anymore. So was it Benin? Yes, yeah, Benin. Yeah, yeah. How many how many people do we know from Benin? But does, what what but do they sound okay, like? But does it sound African? To does you? anyone know? No, but but that, but that's the that's that's the point. It's not like you've got you know you, you you're sat watching this next to some uh, some authentic sounding. <laughs> some of the uh, person from Benin and you can say yeah yeah actually yeah that that it, they were just generic accents they didn't do a bad job and on off the back of that Jos off the back of that I, I mean the last thing I'll say on it is all right let, let's let's speak on cadence uh, and that West African cadence you know it's going to be jumping up and down like this and you know it's going to be you kind of know that is what, if somebody, if you went to 100 people on the road, oh, it was horrible. But it's the point I'm making is, you ask 100 people out there, could you do an impression of a West African, Nigerian? They, they're going to probably speak like this. They're going to speak a bit misjointed. and So I'm not going to cuss them too much for this. As I say, if it was set in a more modern setting, then I would probably have more to say because there's more to go off. There's more you know, they could have, they could have used to influence. 100%, 100%. Um, so we've spoken about performances. Let's touch on the story quickly. And then we'll, I think we'll get to, uh, get to the ratings. Amari. I have, I have one more performance comment because I actually feel like John Bayega is, I'm going to say a very good actor when he's shouting. <laughs> <laughs> so Amari, can I, can I just ask you a question? I, I, is it safe to say that you're saying John Baega's best performance was uh, during that BLM march where he Sorry, in Hyde Park. I've, I've is, seen is, the is video that, of that. Is, is, I've seen, I've seen, uh, I've seen Star Wars. Is, 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 is that? I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you uh, clarity. I, listen, I, I just want some clarity. Yeah, but I'm going to give you clarity. Because he, he was, I'm he was very shouty. Yeah. I mean, he even I had a, he had a megaphone. He is actually a role model and he's very good as a great, he's a great black man. What he seems to come across, what he seems to come across as a great black man. However, his best roles are when he shouts. Because he did the beer and March Hyde Park. Great. 
<laughs> that wasn't a performance, though. Oh, well, trust me. To, to, to non-black people, it was a performance. So, you know. What was he auditioning for there? What was he auditioning for? <laughs> Do you want me to tell you? I said the BLM march was, was for Gazy. <laughs> I didn't say that. That's not my word. So, so I could have this. Man, man went yeah. for a screen, a screen read, a table read. Man, man, man went for a table I had, read. I had three Star Wars films of him chase of him chasing around a white woman, screaming every minute, and he got paid consistently for it. So I respect it so much. Because if I want to scream after a white woman and not, and not get in prison for screaming after a white woman, and not a Karen come connect me, he's doing well. He's doing so well. And then when I see him in the Woman King, I'm like. All those times he was talking, it just seemed like, eh. but the one time he opened his mouth, the one time, you see, I'm doing accent. The one time he opened his mouth, I was like, oh, I like this. I just realized because he was shouting. So in every role he has to do, he needs to make sure he shouts. Because when he shouts, oh, his best thick. film his best film is Attack the Block. Let's keep it. But he's not shouting shout halfway through that film. You lot are disrespecting now. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen Detroit? Nice. Wait, have you seen Detroit? <laughs> oh, yeah. Nah, he was have levels. Have you seen Detroit? Levels, Amari, levels, have you seen levels. Detroit? Big film. Big films. <laughs> oh, you just said, are you saying now we're disrespecting? <laughs> so we weren't well, well, just well, we said before. The block is where we're now we're disrespecting. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Imagine it. Imagine it. Imagine it. I was like, no, no, yeah. I'm not having yeah. this. I'm drawing a line. <laughs> I'm drawing a line. It's like, I don't give a fuck. You fuck around too much. You get to seven. That's what I said. When I saw, I saw his box start moving in the middle of what oh, I was saying. My, <laughs> my goodness. What's your I'm issue? Not a... No, that is, you're, no, you're disrespecting him. Uh, I'm not saying, you're saying he's, he's a bad, bad actor. No, that is what you're saying. All I'm saying is that he peaks when he shouts. That's what no, I'm no, saying. No, no. That, that's not the rhetoric that you just spewed. No, you, but that's you, the to, me, <laughs> to me, what yeah. you just said is that he's only good when he's shouting. So you, that is what I said, though. That yeah. is exactly what so I said. So what he's he, what he's bad um, when he's not shouting. Sorry, I saw Orlando Bloom shout in the film once. I was like, "Why are you shouting?" Nah, just, I, I can't. I, I can't just let <laughs> so, you get away with that because Detroit. He was brilliant in that Imperial Dreams. Have you seen that as well? I don't think I've seen Imperial Dreams. Okay. You need to go. Maybe out. I need to rewatch Detroit. Are you you actually, need to rewatch no, no, Detroit. Uh, yeah. I'm not I'm not discrediting his ability or what he's done or who he is. Nah, you I'm are, just saying you were, you the were. best roles I've seen, the best scenes I've small seen acts? him in. Did you watch scene. him in Small Axe? So the problem was that after your review of doing all the other other things, when we got to Small Axe, I couldn't watch Small Axe. And that was your fault, not mine. <laughs> My so, fault? <laughs> yeah, because you were slating it too much for me to actually want to actually no, go But that was the best it. episode in the series. Oh, who, in the front sorry, end. who was slating it? Me or you? You was you? No, no, no. Okay. I think you need to go back to YouTube.com. So you and go you watch, were slating, uh, You were slating the other ones. And I was no, like, no, why no. am I going to watch this? Either way, watch that one because that's probably his best performance that I've seen. In Whatever. Life. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Okay, fine. Was he shouting in that? If I find a scene no, where he was shouting. He was not shouting. Uh, oh, so you could... I'm not saying he's not a bad actor. I'm just saying he's that's best how, Okay, are... all I'm saying is that's how it <laughs> came across. Oh, okay. I didn't want to let you get away with that and think uh, that I your, to, I your opinion it. represents the cast. Hey, listen, I remember, I remember seeing in Pacific Rim, he was shouting. Okay, I haven't actually seen number two, so I can't call him the Pacific Rim. No one should see number two, to be fair, but he was shouting. So, you know. All right, so in terms of the storyline, Amari, how are you feeling about the storyline of The Woman King? I thought the storyline was very good, apart from the Portuguese Donnies that I didn't need, because I don't know why they was there. Like, man man just had to turn into a freedom fire after his mum, who I think passed away before he got there, told him to go see... Where, where she was from. I, I'll tell you one thing, just just to jump off uh, you mentioning the Portuguese guys. So obviously the one who's mixed race, it, it did make me, I won't say laugh, but I did think it was a bit interesting how he was, he showed that confliction. Now obviously he's half black, he's half white when he had the scene with Nawi and he's explaining that. And it did make me think a lot of mixed race people, this is how it would have been for them. Like, the confliction of, you know, <laughs> because back then it really was black versus white. Whites were taking over the world of slavery and enforcing it as much as the blacks were as well. But then a lot of the blacks obviously didn't want to be enslaved. So 
it was an interesting insight. I think they could have done more with his character because I think his character, especially in society today, there were a lot of, of conversations and maybe character development they could have had and in woven him into the storyline a bit more as well. Um, I think, because I think as we mentioned on the performances, I feel they kind of just, it was a bit like character placement. Yeah, we'll put a couple uh, sl enslavers in there. One of them is mixed race, is a bit conflicted, has a little uh, meeting with one of the um, the homies and that's it. So I, that, that I feel they could have explored that more. But yeah, as you were saying, the storyline. To be honest, what spun me is that he wasn't a clean shaven fade or just one haircut mixed race on you. It that's what sp that's what spun me the most. Because you're telling me that you're part of their society in terms of white society and you had your hair like that. Come on, come on, like do better. You you really think he's gonna have that haircut? I can't see it. I can't. You know, because he wants to fit into the society that he's in. You think his hair's gonna be who's gonna do his hair? He's gonna get the slaves to do his hair, but we we didn't we didn't really see he might have. Come no no from no no, no. But I'm, I'm just saying. Are you, are you, what we're trying to say is that the slaves are gonna do his hair, and then he's gonna chill with the slaves for a bit. They go back to say, "Hey, yes, Pedro, how you doing? Let's go get some more slaves today. Let's go on the journey. We're going to Africa. Yes." Yeah, but that was the point, isn't it? That's the point. That that's the whole point of the being conflicted is that the the homing people were selling slaves, so they were cool with the slavers so that that is that's precisely the point Amari no I was talking about him specifically not the rest of the not the rest of the storyline just him that's his storyline his storyline confused me the rest of it made sense but him yeah I, I definitely didn't like his story from as I said from the love interest perspective I just thought that was just pointless added nothing to the film definitely yeah it didn't add nothing to the film but can you make a slave trade movie without including some sort of slave trader you know let, 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 let's let, let's be clear on that portuguese english spanish you know they they, they were literally the the man cities and the psgs of, of 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 the slave trade world you know so let's uh see did you see what i did there as well those of those those woke people will understand what I just said there, but anyway, we're not going to go into that. Well, they were the big boys. They, they, listen, it, it, you know that was what the slave that, that, they were the pioneers of the slave trade. So you kind of had to, you know, even though, like I said, it was more his Malik, I think his name was. He was more of a you know a kind of a love interest, and it was almost I felt like so he was kind of there to kind of test her because she she was kind of wavering a little bit. But obviously for her to be uh, one of the warriors, you know, they kind of, they took that oath, all the rest of it. And she kind of represented this new age of actually kind of, let, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to question it. You know, why, why has it always been this way? You know, even though ultimately she, she stuck with tradition. Um, you know, I, 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 thought, I found it quite funny that that scene right at the end where she kind of turned and looked at him. Uh, and they kind of exchanged that that glance, and then she just turned and just carried a walk in. I thought that was was quite hilarious. But I just thought, you know, it as much as he was annoying him, and um, was it Santo is whatever his, whatever his his, his his friend's name was. They kind of had to be in there, just not you know lose the the, the love interest, and it was predictable that he was half. Because you know, his, his mum was from there. Could you imagine him being you know, pure it, white it, and then him falling and then her falling? <laughs> Well, that, actually, on that on that subject, <laughs> no, no, because then that move would have been Pocahontas. We've seen Pocahontas. It's called Avatar. Totally like, different let's, film. Let's not move. Let's carry on. Let's carry on with the day. Well, I mean, the only thing I'll say about the storyline, because um, again, we're making a lot of points here with specific characters or performances in the film, and I think, like I said, it all added up to, for me, a conclusion of it was weak source. I thought it was very run of the mill um there were areas that they could have gone into and rose could have gone down that i think would have given this more of an impact and i thought this was going to be one of those films that i was left kind of in the fields and i, and I felt an impact and i felt the storyline i felt the you know the message of what ultimately gina prince byford was trying to portray um yeah, the whole the slavers thing, I thought we might have gone down a sort of rape 
um, or like a pillaging kind of route, which I felt would have been a bit more believable. Um, double crossing with the slavers a bit more. It was just very weak. And then I think Carl mentioned it, or was it Amari that mentioned it? Or even, I can't remember who said it, but the film was kind of build the woman king. But we only, yeah, we only get that in the last 10 minutes of the film. And, you know, up until that point, I actually was thinking to myself, so when is she going to get, when am I going to see her coronation? When is she going to ascend? Is Boyega going to get taken out? Is she somehow going to be next to, like, like it, it kind of didn't really fit that kind of thing. And then where you're just giving a quick, like, 10 minutes at the end, a little speech from Boyega, a, a gift of the sword, now you're on the throne. And it, it, it I don't, I think ultimately the storyline was, it was a good start but I don't think enough was built on it to make it as impactful as this film should have been. Yeah, I just wanted to piggyback on what you said. I think the key word you said is was very generic, run-of-the-mill. When you, when you look at the story down, it's most basic. Again, it's that young rookie cadet who goes through training. She becomes almost like the master, and then they go out and battle the slavers. It's as simple as that. That was my <laughs> <Like Pokemon. laughs> that was my dis- biggest disappointment. Now I thought it was gonna be more wait, than that. Wait, Kyle. Yeah. Are you saying this is Star Wars, the original the the, the our younger years? You know when it's like I Anakin Skywalker has now joined the Jedi Force to fight the Empire. Is this what you're trying was. to tell me? I agree with <laughs> what you're saying though. I agree with what you're saying. Hey, John, Bayega, you're still involved. Listen, you're here. <laughs> Story <laughs> Agendas will run. Agendas will run. Yeah, so I think for it to be taken to that next level, where it failed slightly for me is action. There were definitely some good action scenes, but then there were some that I thought, mm, this could have been shot a bit better. So if, if the action scenes were of a certain level, then I would say I would have given it a slightly higher rating. But yeah, generic is the key term. I think as well, me personally, these kind of films with these kind of undertones, they work better. And I think I just said it, I need impact. So even if I felt those fight scenes a bit more, and again, I know, you know, me and Giles, we've had this conversation throughout the years where we've just randomly at times spoken about Braveheart and laughed. And and I remember one of the things you said to me years ago, before I'd even seen it, you, you remember you saying, the best way to describe to sorry to describe Braveheart is grim. The fight scenes in that film were grim. Why? Because they were violent. Because you saw gore. You felt the swords going through people. You felt the slashing. You felt the throat cutting. And as much as that is a very carnal way to look at things, we're going back to the 18th century, talking about almost like civil war, fighting slavers. That is how I would expect the battle seems to be, the fighting to see, visceral, you know, I'm seeing body parts getting slashed in, but that is going to have the impact, which is, I felt would have made me feel the emotion of this film. I didn't feel any emotion from, from the way that this kind of uh, panned out. Yeah. It's funny you should bring up Braveheart because I did, you know, when, when, you know, from the opening scene, um, and I, I won't touch too much on it because I, I was going to say it in my wrap up, but I think it's down to do with the rating of the film. Um, you know, Braveheart is a is a well, it's an R rating or eighteen rating. So you can, you've got that you've got that scope to be as graphic. You know, you can have that dismemberment. You know, just touching on the, on, on on the fight scenes. I mean, you know, there, there was action. You know, I thought the, the the choreography was 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 on point, and it was really good to see Viola Davis, um, in this really physical role. You know, um, but it was a it's, it was a, it's a it's a fifteen. So there's only so there's only so far you can. You know, there was a lot there was a lot of the fight scenes where I was like, did did they? Are they play fighting, or have they actually have they actually killed someone? You know, obviously there was little cutaways, and that you, there was the odd, you know, stabbing that you saw, or, or chopping, or, or whatever. But it, it wasn't all, always clear, and just and that's just me going, you know, going by your comparison to Braveheart. It was it was clear, yeah, that person's dead. Whereas in this, it it, it wasn't 
always crystal clear. Yeah, and just to piggyback off that, what I did find interesting is that, yeah, for some reason in England it was rated a 15, but in America it's PG-13. So I'm not quite sure what happened there. Why? Because I, I assume that would be a 12A in England, a PG-13. So, again, it's half measures. I would say you you wanted to do this big battle scenes, but then you didn't go all the way. That was that was a big issue for me. Yeah, because okay, so you know my my fourteen year old daughter went to watch this, and I was like, oh no, you can't watch it. It's for fifteen. But having watched it, she can watch it. Obviously, I'm not going to tell her that until she is fifteen. But that's not the point. But yeah, it it it. it yeah, it, it could have been a, a, a 12A. I think, obviously, there was an implied, obviously, that well, there was a rate, but it was an implied rate in terms of, you know, other than that, don't really see, I don't really see why it, it, it should have been a 15, if I'd be honest with you. The only thing I'll say to that as well is um, I I personally feel sometimes, you know, I'm not I'm not a filmmaker. I am a critic and I'm someone who enjoys films. Um, but I feel that when we substitute a rating, I feel that you're going for mass appeal and mass appeal most of the time means obviously revenue. And I just wish maybe more filmmakers would, and this is purely my opinion, I'm not cussing their taste, their art, their, to the, their dedication to the craft, but I wish that more filmmakers would maybe not think about mass appeal and focus more on the feeling, on the on the art, on maybe the take of the movie they're trying to make, and and maybe think more about the realism or bringing invoking certain emotions from what they're actually directing and putting together. Because I be, I do believe, and I'll touch on this in my rap, in my wrap up. I do believe the Woman King had all the kind of ingredients to be a contender for best film of the year. But it completely, completely, very quickly, you knew you weren't going in that that sorry that direction, and this was going to be when we when we when we put together the list of greatest or best slave orientated films of all time. I don't really think this is going to be near the middle. I think you're talking the bottom quarter, in my opinion. Yeah. So this film <clears throat> just. The- you lot was talking about ratings, and I, what I feel like you lot have missed the trick of is that every film is now a Marvel film in terms of the lack of of the lack of violence that takes place in a film, so they can get it past the board, so it can be shown. The only time films are not a Marvel film is when it has no choice not to be a Marvel film. Because I will tell you for free, if they could make that Halloween film that's coming out be a fifteen or a twelve A, they would. And then, and it's prob and I haven't watched the rating, but I'm assuming it's going to be at 18 because they have no choice because of what the franchise is. But in don't general, be surprised. don't be surprised if it's a 15. Well, to be fair, well, see, well, see, they try to do Blade as a as a as a 12A or whatever, and that's under disrespute right now. So you know, what I'm trying to say to you, there's some things you just can't play with. You shouldn't play with some things. They wanted to make this film, as you said, mass appeal. Doing that means. The blood of violence. Because somebody else said, oh, I would like there to be more blood and glory. And the only reason there's not more blood and glory in it is because it's a 15 or a 12A and not an 18. And that's it. And ironically, with other films, there will be the same kind of blood and glory and it will be a 15 or it will be a 12A. It w- but it won't, it won't be an issue what it is. It's just because of the way the film is said, oh, let's everybody watch it. Let's make people watch it for different reasons. I told you there's an agenda why we can watch a film about slavery where slavery is not an issue in the film. But, you know, it is what it is. Okay, this has been an interesting one. Um, I've I've got no idea which way this is going to go. Kyle, you can kick things off. What was your rating for The Woman King? Yeah, so I thought The Woman King, as I said, I thought it had a generic storyline. Um... But it did keep me entertained throughout the majority of the film. I thought the performances were great throughout. There was no one that disappointed me or let me down. Um, again, taking this is purely a film-based rating because I, I don't want to get into the controversy. So taking that aside, as I said, I was entertained. 
And it is something I would probably watch again. So I gave it three stars on that basis. Cool. Amari, what was your, your rating of The Woman King? I gave it four. No, I lied. I gave it three. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I took, a, I took up a star because of the accents alone. And and, and Lynch's accent like that. Just because, you know, I'm consistent. When I don't like something, something has to suffer for it. And if I think that's something, he gets a little bit extra. Actually, no, I lied. I gave it a three also because of my, my, my girl. My girl is 30, acting 14. Sorry, we're not. We're no longer in the age where we need to be watching. We, there is child actors, you know. You can use child actors in films. They can do these films, okay? We're not. We're not doing this anymore. We shouldn't be doing this. We're not going to give this film an extra. We're not going to give the film. If you said a standalone film, you could get a four star. But that reason alone, you lose a star. The actors make sure it's, it's valid, in my opinion. You're you're two you're a three star film. You can give it a four star if you take away Lashana's accent, but you can't because you know she's in the film a lot. So what do you want me to do? That's it. I, I don't have any more additional things to say about the film. I liked it. Will I watch it again? Maybe. Yeah, I probably will. I did want to. I did want to watch it again before we reviewed, but you know, you know how these films and cinemas and timings don't always work. But thinking about that accent has really upset me. I can't, I can't lie. And my, my girl's 30 years old. 30 <laughs> years, 30. She's my, she could be my age mate. And you're telling me she's 14 running around with a, with a shark tooth in her back. We didn't even get to that shark tooth in her back business. But, but you're telling me. You're telling me. She didn't look 30 to me anyway. But that's what I'll say. But, but that's the whole problem. There's a problem in this world. Problem. And you're telling me. Uh, I gave this three stars as well. Um, I'll be very honest, it it nearly, nearly got a two. The only thing that kept it moving for me was the the cinematography of the film. I thought the way that it was shot, where it was shot, the scenes of like the palace and the planes, some of where the battles were, I felt very believable. I didn't like the kind of slave kind of uh, port area. I felt that felt a bit generic. But um, I did feel like I was there. I touched on the performances. I think Viola Davis is, she's a saint to behold, man. I just, at this point, again, I'm starting to really appreciate actors and actresses who we've watched, uh, you know, a lot of their films and their body of work has remained in that upper echelon and range, showing range as well. So that was cool. Uh, Another major issue I had was, I don't know how you guys felt, but I felt, going back to my comment of this is a Channel 5 film, filmed with Hollywood level cameras was there was a lot of jump cuts. I felt for the first 45 to maybe an hour, it, it was like one minute we're walking through or we're arriving at the, the palace. The next minute we're doing something else. The next minute two characters are interacting. I didn't like that. I felt that gave it, it cheapened the film for me. They took out the cohesion of the journey and of the story unfolding. Um, but overall, the action, I think, as well, made up for it. I always love a good fight scene. Um, and especially those kind of fight scenes set in that time. I just always watch them and think, I am so fucking happy I wasn't born anywhere near that time because, yeah, that is long. That's a madness, you know, having the, the battle. And I always wonder what happens to the corpses. Throw a couple of vultures in there just to let us know that they're getting the neeping up. Um, but, yeah, it, it was run of the mill. <laughs> I think I said that earlier on. Quite generic run of the mill. However, it was entertaining there was enough performance wise and storyline wise to keep me watching and above above everything this is something touching on a subject that i think is very important to black people as a whole so you always have to give it time that's not to say you give it a blight but take it in see what the story they're telling is then go and do your research and obviously find out what you find out but do try to appreciate these kind of stories being told because i feel like we need more of them in society anyway giles what was your rating yeah, three stars from me as well. Um, I feel like it missed a, it missed a few tricks um, considering what it was trying to do. It, it never really quite got there. You know, I, I was going to touch on the jump cuts as well. I mean, at times I felt like I was watching a Fast and Furious uh, movie that set all over the world um, because it just it just kept on just 
jumping all over the place. And the the scenes were kind of never long enough for any of the emotion to be conveyed. A, a, a slow and silly then. I don't, I don't know what's the opposite of a fast and furious. But yeah, it just, you know, for, for the seriousness of, of, of the film or what it was trying to be, it, I don't think it was that serious. Um, you know, there were some standout performances from Viola. Um, and I think, to be fair, I think, I feel like all of the women were really good in it. Um, there's nothing wrong, you know, and I, I think maybe there should be more films where we're, we're showing black women that are empowered, you know, because ultimately, irrespective, if you, irrespective of the, okay, slave trade, whatever, whatever you know, it was pretty much uh, a female dominant cast. And let's be honest, they, they, they did their thing. Um, yeah. So yeah, like I said, three stars, um, to sum it up, I think it was, it was, um, it was better than I expected, but not as good as I hoped. So that gives the woman King a TMRG star rating of 3 stars. 